What's going on? It's your boy, James59, and caught wind of this, the update patch for Return of Rome as of the release of this video. I'm releasing this on May the, May the 16th, um, so the game should be out now, though I am seeing this the night before, and just wanted to scroll through this update, see what we see. I haven't talked a lot about Rome. I did a short video on it, but now that the DLC is out, we can kind of say some things for sure. So let's go ahead. Let's let's get in this bad boy. Um, taking a look at just some of the game. Mm, nothing terribly interesting there. The area healing effect used by Kavan's Ryan Stronghold no longer lat, no longer stacks. Okay, that's probably a good thing. Balance changes. Okay, so it looks like let's just see. It looks like we're getting a new regional unit, the Dromon. It's an anti-building siege war warship. Uh huh. Kind of looks like a. You can kind of even look. It kind of looks like a mangonel of the sea. It looks like it even has a little mangonel inside of it. It's available in Imperial Age to Byzantines, Goths, Huns, and Romans. And then we lose, and then the Elite Cannon Galleon now benefits from Siege Engineers. Ooh. That's low-key pretty good for water maps. That's not bad at all. Okay. Uh, Bengalis, Elephant units no longer lose their conversion resistance. Okay. Byzantines get the Droman, lose the Cannon Galleon, and the Fire Ship Attack Speed applies. So basically... Byzantine's Imperial Age Navy. Pretty sick. I mean, I've, I've always really liked them as a naval sieve. Um, this is pretty sick. You know, you're not going to get the Cannon Galleon. You're going to get this thing. That's pretty sweet. Goths received the Droman too. And the Huns received the Droman. Now, honestly, I think the big winners in this might just be the Huns. Because I don't think the Huns got Cannon Galleons at all. And now you kind of have a cannon galleon equivalent. The Huns are one of those sieves that you would sometimes see on water maps because you don't make houses, but usually for like early game rushing, maybe more like hybrid maps. So I don't know. I don't think this makes the Huns a crazy water sieve or anything like that. Um, Goths, I think, are at least interesting because I think the Goths get ship raid too, which is pretty, pretty sweet. Um, Byzantines, though. Byzantines are pretty interesting. And then... Rome, look at the civilization, new civ, okay, not, you see here, they're not visual initially available for ranked multiplayer, but will be in the near future, that's cool, that's cool, okay, so let's talk about the civ bonuses, right, villagers gather, build, and repair 5% faster, that could be pretty sweet, I think you have to kind of test it out a bit to figure out what it means for your builds, um, I kind of like this though, it's kind of like, it's kind of like merging in some ways, kind of like the, a little bit of the Aztec bonus and a little bit of the Spanish bonus all in one, which could be pretty cool, actually. Okay. Um, galley line plus one attack. Um, my understanding is the Civ lacks Bracer, so this is going to make it kind of like an early game bonus. War galleys have extra armor. Ooh, that's interesting. Extra plus one. So like melee and pierce armor. And gallons and dromans have extra armor. Ooh, okay. So Romans are going to have tanky galleys in the early game. M2 receives double effect from blacksmith armor upgrades. Now you are going to be missing the last blacksmith upgrade on your infantry. So basically you're going to have really strong. Basically with this civilization, I feel like the identity of it is that you kind of get a bump early with them and you miss a lot of things late, but because of the bump early, you're still going to be kind of playable late. I think that's the idea. And scorpions are super cheap benefit from ballistics. So basically this is your ranged unit. Okay. A unique unit. Um, let's see the centurion really expensive increases movement speed by 10%. 15% for elite. And so it increases movement speed and attack speed. Oh, by militia line units. Doesn't stack for multiple centurions. Let's see what let's see what let's see what the bugs say about that, right? I can imagine this unit being really buggy. 
uh, when we first get out with it. Um, so basically, your swordsman line. So you're going to want to make... That's going to be an extremely expensive comp to afford because I don't think the Civ gets supplies either. You do get the Legionary. And it replaces the two-handed swordsman champion at barracks. That's kind of that's kind of cool, actually. Cause not gonna lie, it's kind of a pain in the butt to research a uh, two-handed swordsman and um, and uh, whatever it is. It replaces two-handed swordsman champion. So, do you have to research legionary? Cause I don't see a research cost here. That, that'd be my question. So, maybe I'll have to do a, a whole video on the romans um oh it has bonus damage versus infantry Ooh, so this is kind of like a jaguar warrior but you make it the barracks yo that's kind of sick actually yo roman infantry is gonna be baller can you throw that centurion in there i mean we'll see how much this actually doesn't matter when we get to rank um, Scorpion's galley line fire 33% faster. I kind of dig it. Um, because since your galleys are going to miss a bracer, you get a little bit of a bump up. Comita Tensis, uh, Militia line, Night line, Centurions train 50% faster and receive a 5 damage charge attack. So this bonus is like kind of like part of the Frank's bonus and part of the God's bonus. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty wild. Five damage charge attack. That's pretty crazy. That's going to have to be tested out. I mean, you don't want to make too much of this, right? Because by the time it gets to T bonus, Scorpion line, minimum range reduced, that's cool. Because we know that it's not going to be available for ranked multiplayer. So clearly they're worried about how some of these things are going to balance. So I wouldn't get all, I wouldn't get hung up on this. But it'll be fun to test. I kind of like the way that they've actually decided to just kind of like add it into the unranked lobbies. Okay. Some data mod support. That's pretty sweet. In general, more data mod stuff. A lot of things that we don't really... Not really into. Full tech tree mode. Who okay. cares? Return of Rome. Okay, build spotlight new Civ, Lock Viet. Basically, uh, Vietnam. Forgers, working hard. Archery range units, plus to melee armored. I'd actually like to see a bonus like this added to an Age of Empires 2 civilization, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of things I don't understand, honestly. New game modes, gameplay. So they're basically talking about, uh, they're basically changing, the, all of this is the Age of Empires 1 stuff. Ranked lobbies and leaderboards will be available in Return of Rome. Oh, so you play in ranked lobbies. Ah, that's kind of that's slick, actually. I kind of like that. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. Um, all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stable and archery range upgrades cost minus 30%. That's another bonus I'd like to see in uh in Age of Empires 2. Camels plus one pierce armor. I love I've been I've been the Turks need this bonus in Age of Empires 2. Um ongoing. What's coming up? Okay, the return of Rome event. Hmm. We have some... Let me let's see, let's see. This year we've launched this... What else are we cooking up? The answer, a lot. The community worries that we might be slowing down. I hope for what you're seeing is that the game is only growing. That's cool. Um, okay, okay. Looking at it, continuing to support all the ways which the game is getting bigger. Maintaining our code base and tools. Uh-huh. All right. So it sounds like, you know, that they're just basically saying that, you know, like they're trying to keep the game, you know, trying to update some things that are, uh, you know, like that are old. That's cool. Now, if we take on something big, it constrains our work in other areas, but really all that's happening is we're putting our energy into these larger releases. We have some more of this ahead in the coming months. Okay. 
and yeah that's really that's it guys so what are my thoughts on this um i don't know we'll have to see right uh, as we get into the game what this is gonna look like i'm pretty excited i gotta say I i'm one of the people who i'm i'm cool with the romans being in the game um you know I know that there's a lot of historical controversy about it. Um, I feel that that is, and don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to straw man the people who don't want Rome in the game. I think they have a valid reason. I mean, the box says Rome has fallen. It's like, all right, yeah, like, kind of sounds like it's post Rome. Um, but you know, on the other hand, right? I mean, you know, you know. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, and honestly, it really didn't fall in one. And I like this, I like this idea of, you know, like, the twilight of Rome. Uh, you know, and I think to me, you know, like, you know, and there's so much, there's so much, like, rich history there, you know, even in, like, the, the 400s, I think. Uh, and, yeah, this idea of, like, the civilization at its twilight, that seems fine to me. The real question is its gameplay. And how unique it's going to be and honestly just from looking at the bonuses it feels like it feels like a unique enough sieve at this point it feels it feels unique in that it's like it, it it's i think it reminds me a little bit of It, it was, to me, it feels like a combination of something like Khmer and Bulgarians and and maybe like Byzantines for water. Like it feels like an amalgamation of all that. Because like the Khmer, like the whole like idea of a scorpion sieve, right? Like there's that aspect of it. And then, like, there's obviously, like, I think this sim's going to be strong infantry, and I think it's going to be pretty decent for cavalry, too. Like, I think your cavalry is going to be, like, I think you do get bloodlines and all the armor, but I don't think you get paladin, but you give this, like, you get this charge attack and training faster. That's going to be, that's going to really put your night line in play, I think, in 1v1. Maybe not so much for team games, but I think this could be a good 1v1 sim. And then like the Byzantines, right? It's like Byzantines, except you're 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 instead of being skewed towards fire ships, you're skewed more towards like galleys. Um Which is pretty interesting. This is it's gonna be interesting on water. So yeah, so and I yeah, I, it's gonna be an interesting sieve. I don't really know what to think about it just yet. And I guess the thing in terms of the sieve feel, right, is it feels like a sieve that's gonna be like, okay has this really strong, like, you know, feudal and imperial age. And then it has some, like, tricks up its sleeve and imp, but that's also because you're missing a few things in imp, so. It seems unique enough for me at first blush, but we'll have to see once we get in the game. And we'll have to see what sticks, because honestly, for me, I don't really think about, I don't really, I won't, I'm not going to think that deeply about this sieve until it's going to be on the right ladder, because honestly, that's just what I play. Um, but yeah, but what do you guys think about this? You know, let me know. Um, hopefully we can get some, you know, conversation about it and all that, man. And that being said, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually try and mess around with, uh, with these bad boys later on. Maybe put up a Rome game, see how it looks. But, uh, yep, go out there, man, check out the DLC, enjoy it, have fun. Rome is here! Rome is returned. Alright, guys, see you out on the ladder. Jimmy James, 59. Peace.